Okay, so going back on the agenda now for the Public Works Building Project, and we're going to have a presentation here from uh, Gerald Kagan, who's our architect, Chris Sorensen, who's chairman of the Building Committee, and Terry Gilbertson, who's our building official. Do you, do you think, Mr. Chairman, the first slide then, that we could get these people to sort of shuffle that side for a second? They can, they can sit so in the audience or whatever, yeah. Slide from the And Terry, are you, are you going to lead off? Okay. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Or, or Chris, I'm sorry. That's okay. You got everyone in here? Yes, we got everyone in here. Okay. Let me slide. Well, at our last committee meeting, um, Terry had informed us that we had to do 49 meetings and we <laughs> finally uh, got things in order and, and we thought we'd be able to come forward with everybody so they could see where we're at, what we're doing, uh, the uh, charges that you had given to us and how we fulfill them. Um, Terry has been very, very, very helpful in putting this all together for us and working with us and bringing in some good people that um, the town can be pretty proud of. Um, I'm going to turn everything over to Terry, let him introduce everybody to you, and tell her, tell her a little story of how we started. So we all remember the projects really starting in, in, in 2000, uh, 1999 with the, the oil spill or the gasoline spill that caused us to, to, to demolish more than half of the public works facility. Um, this predates my, my involvement in Woodbridge, but I understand that, that there was a uh, that, that there was a uh, a financial planning that went on for a new public works facility in the 80s. 1987 is began. So we probably started in the 25 year journey, year old journey. <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, and and Chris is absolutely right. We we spent um, uh, uh, the public works committee. Uh, building committee uh, convened in 2005, um, uh, spent um, uh, 49 meetings uh, coming to the conclusion that you will s that they want to share with you now this evening. Uh, and with uh, your uh, assistance, the committee um, uh, hired um, uh, Rothmore and Kagan. Uh, we have some principals of the um, company here today. Uh, there's Dale Roth. Jerry Kagan, and they're ably assisted by Barbara Fabiani. She's a, a local girl made good. Uh, Wood, and, Woodbridge uh, resident. Right. Woodbridge resident. The, um, and the, um, uh, the, the committee has had some assistance in its, in its deliberations, these, these 49 meetings since 2005. Uh, and they uh, first used an engineering firm called SEA. You might remember SEA is that they gave us some advice when citing the firehouse. Uh, they we we moved it around, we had some conclusions, and 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 another time we had to use use them for something, and 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 they um, they came up with a plan, uh, and. Uh, what I have found every time we talk about the public works facility, everybody is very interested, it seems, or at least they're very, very polite. Uh, and the second question that everybody wants to know is, how much is it? That's very nice. How much is it? And we have that information for you tonight, by the way. But, but we found that the land available to us Given the historical use patterns, the area behind public works, if for the older residents uh, will remember that it was used as a landfill. Um, uh, and then there was a, uh, a, an oil spill or a, or a gasoline spill. We didn't, when we, when we cleaned that up, we didn't place, replace the fill. We, we replaced the fill, but we didn't do it in a way that provided compaction of soil. And so, the SCA plan, and you'll see that in a minute um, during the architect's presentation, uh, when it was announced to us that it cost $12 million because of the soil conditions that we would have to do. We were digging, 
we were basically spending $3 million in the ground just to support a very, very large building that you'll see. In, and that was distributed in, in your packages. You might have some of this information in your packages. Um, we, we thought we were quite certain that we wouldn't want to spend $12 million on a public works facility. So we first, uh, Chris and I, uh, first contacted our, our geotechnical engineer. We have some high confidence in him. We've used him in a number of parts of town. We asked for his advice. He, uh, he studied the, the many soil borings that we have of this project and told us that there was a certain line of soil in which we should, could easily work in and then there are areas that we have to stay out of. Uh, and you'll see that. Um, we consulted our civil engineer uh, and, uh, and, 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 and asked some difficult questions of him. And, he proposed something, and you will see that, and it was in your packages. And then we came convinced that no one has yet worked with a, had worked with our public works facility and our members of our public works to determine what exactly what minimum requirements they need. And the minimum requirements that they need turns out to be, and you'll see this is nine heated storage bays for the, we have nine snow plow routes, and we'd like to keep those, those trucks um, uh, in a heated storage bay. And we have two repair bays, and we have a storage, heated storage bay for our Volvo loader and our backhoes, which are essential to our operations. Um, we, we've been tasked by the selectmen to also have a a, a, a truck wash bay that will be able to uh, wash the largest vehicle that we hope to own one day. And we've made that decision. We, we, that, that vehicle is our planned fire ladder truck that, that is on the drawing board somewhere. I'm not keeping track of it, but we will accommodate it as the size of it should we ever be able to wash it. And then uh, your program, this program you will see um, uh, uh, will accommodate uh, a, a, a protected, a carport, a truck carport, just a roof that takes the sunlight and the rain off of our pickups, off of our accessory build, uh, <coughs> vehicles so that they, they're not inside, they're not heated, but they're protected um, uh, to the degree that we think is adequate. So, with that, um, I, 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 perhaps the architect has something to show us, and, and, and it'll echo very closely what you have. We have additional handouts. Maybe we could hand these out. Uh, and you can start here. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, selectmen. My name is Jerry Kagan. I'm a principal in Rockmore and Kagan. I'm going to start with a little bit of the history that Harold just gave you, and then, I mean, that Terry Terry, gave Terry. You, and Harold will pick it up and talk about some of the building. Um, Basically, what we did here was, when we were retained to look at this property, we met with the employees of the Public Works Department. We went down into the garage, we talked to the gentleman, we set up meetings with the gentleman who run the plows. We asked a lot, a lot of questions about how they wanted to run the operation, how the operation had to run. And of those of you who've been down in the Public Works Department saw that, see the beautiful the refrigerators they picked up off the streets, and the sofas that they're sitting on. It's a very homely, maybe a homeless shelter kind of environment. But it's really down to earth. And the guys really don't need a lot, but they need the space to do the job right. So we were retained, and the first thing we did is we looked at the, at the site, and, and we started to realize some issues about the site. Uh, and I'm going to try to sneak up here if I can a little bit and, and have a pen to sort of guide you through. The, the site is directly behind the town hall, which is right there. And when you look at that piece of property, it's a pretty unique piece of property. The gas boys over here. There's a road that goes down to the lower level for additional storage of materials. The materials are stored there. And there's a wonderful new um, salt storage shed right here. We looked at that and we took a look at it and we said, you know, it's sort of interesting, it makes some sense. We, we then took a look at and reviewed the, the next, the first proposal. And let me just deal with the fact that when we met with the soils engineer, he said between this point and this point, 200 feet, is relatively good soil on the site. 
So when we analyze what was happening here with that first proposal, you will notice that there's a gigantic amount of filling in that brown area up on top. There's a gigantic amount of earthwork that was being done over here. And the major building that was being proposed was basically um, in bad soil. And that's why $3 million of that construction cost virtually went into something you never saw in terms of making the soil. They had another structure they proposed across here. They put a gas bay here with some kind of loop rope. I mean, the whole thing was relatively unique in its design. We then looked at the next scheme that was proposed, and this was a little bit more sensible. Uh, there was a desire to move the road, which made a little bit of sense. There was some heavy duty construction work that had the groundwork that had to take place there. There was a potential issue that was going to happen here between the, dis the disproportional settlement between the bad soil area and the good soil area. And that would mean you'd either have to spend a lot of money on footings and foundations or expansion joints or something so that if that settlement ever occurred, it, it would not make a lot, it would make, you wouldn't want to have the building bifurcate itself. And they had put in another addition over here. So when we began to look at the site, we said, it doesn't make any sense to put a building down here. What we really want to do is put a building here where there is good soil, or we thought there was good soil. And we went out and Terry went ahead and hired, and hired a, a soils engineer. We did some test borings on that and my God, there was no rock. And, 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 and there was no bad soil. So maybe that sort of tells us a little bit of something. Let's go to the next slide. So we came up with a very simple proposal, which said, let's build a building from here to here, where there's good soil. We don't have to waste any money on doing anything. We don't have to dig up all the poor soil and repack it and compact it again. Let's put the truck washing bay out of the way, because it was a big piece of equipment that needed to uniquely separate things. And we use it in a manner that would allow us to segregate the work yard where the workmen were going to be from anybody that had to come and get gas, the school buses, the, the fire department, whatever needed to come and get gas. And the gas boy would not have to come through the yard where all of the people were working with their trucks and backing them up and loading them and stuff like that. So we also had one other thing we took a look at, and that was that there was a nice connection once we looked at this thing between this parking lot and the building. Let me turn it over to Harold Roth, who will now take you through the building and what we sort of come up with as our schematic design phase work. Thank you. Basically, uh, to uh, go back just one uh, uh, view here, we were quite concerned about the first thing we did was to understand all of the parameters of the site. And that had to do with the, uh, uh, the conditions of the soil because that was a, a substantial item uh, in the uh, uh, existing cost estimate. And uh, uh, working with uh, uh, Dr. Welty, our uh, uh, in, uh, environmental engineer, uh, uh, we took some more test borings. Uh, we studied carefully the borings and as Jerry pointed out, <coughs> we determined a 200-foot zone that made sense. So we've studied everything on the site very carefully. And in addition to the soil conditions, we felt strongly that there was no reason to even consider moving the salt dome. Uh, it, it could stay there and work well. And there was little reason to really to move the gas boy. It worked if we could work it in with the circulation. And that was uh, uh, the genesis of the whole scheme. Uh, in order to find the best place on the site for the building, we felt that if we moved in this direction to the rear of, of the, this building, that we gain insulation in uh, digging into the hillside, um, but also the best soil conditions. Um, and this, this diagram gives you an indication and, and you have in your in the handout all of the conditions of the test borings of the, the uh, how, how deep the uh, uh, 
soil con uh, bad soil conditions uh, uh, were for all of these uh, uh, test borings. And uh, this drawing does not show the five most recent ones that we felt was prudent to take just as a further uh, as a further check. Here is the 200 foot zone that uh, we're, we're dealing with, and we felt we, we had to stick within that. This, uh, this drawing shows how uh, we developed a concept for uh, a shed, which is about 50 feet in depth in this direction, um, into the hill, cut into the hillside. Here is the town hall building here, and the driveway to the rear of it, and here's a walkway that uh, will go from the driveway, parking area, uh, to the shed, uh, into directly onto a mezzanine, which is allowable uh, within this zone. We have 14 foot clearance for trucks to come in. We've carefully measured all of the uh, uh, the trucks uh, presently owned by by the town, uh, and uh, uh, this this view here shows uh, a lift. We'll have clearance here. Um, in, in addition to a grease pit that will show up in the plan. And in, in this configuration, we have clear story light that comes in and will provide some natural light into the uh, uh, storage base. Here is a, a slide which uh, shows the, the plan, if you can make it out. This is the ground floor plan. It's a long uh, shed that's very simple. Repetitive framing is over 200 feet long. And the storage bays, when I say storage, that means where the trucks, essentially the plows, uh, will be stored here. And uh, there are 14 by 14 overhead uh, doors. Uh, and this is an indication of the plan of each one of the trucks. Uh, we can make sure that we store uh, the truck for each one of the, the uh, plow uh, routes. And, uh, and then we have the uh, maintenance phase for repairs. And we've placed it and, and the configuration so that, and this is also very critical in, in terms of cost savings, is that the contractor will build this section first, which is the, the maintenance phase. Uh, along with uh, one or two storage bays, but uh, yet to be determined, but, but essentially the repair bays. And all of the equipment will be uh, in working order, the new building built. And as soon as that is in uh, working condition and in operation, uh, the uh, existing concrete block uh, building that we felt was, was in such poor condition that it wasn't at all prudent to take taxpayers' money and try to renovate a building which is in terrible condition and poorly dimensioned and, and really not very uh, serviceable at all. Uh, overnight, it can move directly into here without uh, missing a beat in terms of maintenance of critical uh, town uh, vehicles. This uh, view up at the top shows how we can take advantage of the dimensions within the section for a mezzanine, and it has a stair that comes up from the repair bays to uh, a, a space that we call a break room uh, for the employees that may, uh, may take a, a, a break in the middle of the night on a snowstorm, and uh, 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 a modest place for lockers and, and a couple of showers uh, for both uh, men and women. And we also have space for more storage. Uh, God knows the department really needs uh, storage of all kinds of things. Uh, and uh, we, we have space for some of the department Offices, which now could be all placed in one in one location, very efficiently, and with 
just a walkway from the parking area so that the, par uh, the, the public can utilize uh, coming for various uh, uh, licenses or permits to the department uh, uh, over here and the department offices uh, and, and a place for uh, meetings. It's a very simple uh, steel structure, um, concrete walls up against the uh, uh, hillside and uh, uh, it's all falling into place very nicely where we've accommodated um, uh, all of the major items of equipment uh, that, uh, uh, that are needed and uh, uh, it will make a tremendous difference in terms of the efficiency uh, and the maintenance of the department. The uh, uh, next slide will uh, show the elevations. These are the overhead doors, uh, which are thermal doors and very well insulated. Um, uh, and each, each bay will be numbered with a lighted numeral so that it uh, can be utilized going in and going out at night. Um, the, the roof is uh, standing seam. Uh, no finished aluminum that will last uh, way beyond uh, all of us in this room here uh, and requiring no maintenance of all and the walls are poured in place uh, concrete for the structure and uh, above that is a product called cow wall which is a sandwich of uh, uh, fiberglass filled with insulation with uh, uh, very very high um, value of insulation and by the way that in, in uh, midway through our studies our very early studies here there's a new uh, energy code which is coming to place uh, which is rather formidable and uh, so we're dealing with that and we think we have uh, control over uh, all of those things <laughs> this is the elevation that's very hard to make out but this is what you would see if you look out a window uh, from the selectman's office down. Uh, it, it will still have the buffer of wonderful trees and, and landscaping, but uh, uh, you'll, you'll see the clear story up here and the uh, aluminum roof and, and a walkway only uh, uh, up in the mezzanine space itself. Uh, this shows a, a, a preliminary studies which uh, we need uh, a lot more information about washing uh, equipment but this is a wash bay which is uh, uh, roughly a building that's about 20 by 60 you go in one door uh, it has a continuous trench drain and uh, uh, wash equipment yet to be determined and the vehicle that can then go out and uh, the site plan works so that uh, town equipment can come in, go through the wash, and uh, uh, we'll have uh, undercarriage washing equipment where all the salt really accumulates. Uh, and with that kind of efficiency, the vehicles should last longer. Uh, these are expensive trucks, of course, that we've all been dealing with. And uh, uh, then can go and refuel without at all penetrating the work area where the uh, mechanics are, are working on the, on the vehicles. And this uh, is a blow up of uh, showing the, the building in the hillside and the mezzanine which looks out to the uh, town hall here and uh, the steel trusses which will carry sprinkler piping for uh, fire protection and um, the various elements of uh, lighting and uh, uh, heating, heating equipment. There'll be a, a, a lift and uh, uh, we, we've taken an accurate census of all the equipment that is uh, presently owned by the town. So is the lift, is that in one bay? In one bay. We'll have uh, right now, the planning is for one lift, uh, which will accommodate the, the heaviest uh, truck, the double axle, 
uh, dump truck, and uh, uh, which you know, if you go back to the plan. Um, so, so we the, the we have we maintain a wide variety of equipment. The um, um, and a lift that would be able to lift our heaviest salt truck is quite frankly the kind of hydraulic lift that comes from the floor is very, very expensive. Mm -hmm. in, t in speaking with the people who work on our trucks, our employees, they prefer a grease pit. This would be a modern grease pit uh, and they think that, th that the most of their work can be done on our heavy trucks from the salt, uh, from the um, grease pit. A modern grease pit apparently has, who knew, a hydraulic lift that moves around in it uh, from the floor of the, of the grease pit and is able to access, uh, allow him to do whatever work he needs to do. The other variety of equipment that we've worked on, uh, uh, work on is a, a fleet of pickup trucks that the guys use in, in another season. There's, we've been asked by the selectmen to accommodate the, to consolidate the police car maintenance from the center building presently into this facility. Um, and uh, and then those, the senior van, um, and those vehicles need a, a two post frame lift so that we can do brakes and, and, and that sort of thing. Whatever, you know, like. Right, so, um, uh, so the project um, uh, uh, has a, 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 a grease pit, it has a small lift, and it has another repair bay that does not have a lift on it. However, in conversations I had today with our, our deputy ch police chief, <coughs> is that if he's moving his operation over, they have a lift there. It's our lift. So we would welcome him bringing his mechanic and his lift so that <coughs> You know, we think that we have all of this covered. Can I? Uh, yeah, I'd like to take you through a, a, a walkthrough of this building, if I may, for a second, um, because what I think is really important are a couple of things. There are two costs to be every project. The first cost is the construction cost going into the ground. But you, as a community, need to be aware of the long-term maintenance costs. And one of the things that is really important about this particular structure is that we have no high cost maintenance items in this design. This is a concrete wall, poured concrete, in place, insulated, doesn't need any maintenance. Left the way it comes off of the forms, left the way it is. The cow wall, which you see on the side here, and I don't know if any of you have ever gone out of Tweed New Haven Airport, has been in Tweed New Haven Airport for over 25 years now, and has never had any maintenance done to it whatsoever. Terry's going to pass around a piece of the cow wall. It is totally insulated with an R20 value. It is aluminum, it is fiberglass, and unless somebody throws a stone or shoots a rifle at it, it virtually doesn't have to be maintained whatsoever. So in terms of maintaining this building, it's really a low-cost maintenance facility. And now, that's translucent as well, uh, Terry? It, it is, sir, to some degree. The lower the insulation value, the higher the translucency. We need to go with an R20, so the translucency is only 20%. But that would be only on the side walls here and on the front walls along here. We can go to a lower translucency in the upper level here where the clear story is because we are allowed a certain percentage of that based upon the new energy code. And we can get more lighting from the clear story than we could from before. It is also important to notice that this clear story, just leave that wallet for a sec, is also going to become the major force for all of the evacuation of the fumes and the, and the services inside the building. Because this is a, a parking structure, a parking garage, we need to evacuate any carbon monoxide within 30 seconds out of the entire building. And we have designed a system with our mechanical engineers that will provide a ventilation point here and, a, and an outgoing point up here that they can blow this air through this facility in 30 seconds and clean it once this carbon monoxide sensor goes off. That's part of the new code that we have to deal with today. All of the ventilation from the heating and air conditioning will come out that movers out of that, that same clear story area. So what we've done is there will be no penetrations on the roof of either of the roofs. Now why did we do that? We did that because we don't want this building to leak. 
And the more penetrations you put into a roof, the more possibility you have for leaking of the building. We need to get a very high R value in this roof in order to meet the energy code. And the way we're going to accomplish that is by using wood decking on the inside, rigid insulation, and then the roofing material on top. There's, so virtually, as long as the building is in clean circulation, there should be no problems in terms of any of those materials. They are long-lasting materials. So from a sustainability point of view, we felt it was very important for us to provide you with a facility that not only came within your budget, but that cost very little to maintain over the years. Because the, let's face it, the public works garage is not going to be a high priority maintenance item to anybody in the budget. And so it's really incumbent upon us as architects to provide the town with the most cost effective way to get that accomplished. And now let's walk through this 3D pen uh, presentation that Molly has put together for you. And you can see that when you walk inside, you see the garage doors, you see the way in which the building, if you just fly through the roof, would you please, Molly, in one sec? This is the mezzanine level right here, where all the activities would take place. These are the trusses that have to be built in order to hold the roof up. These pieces you see here, and another piece in the front, are where the chain falls would be in order for the to lift an engine out or to pick up a heavy piece of equipment that uh, off the back of a truck that has to happen. So they're again reinsuring the fact that the workers are going to be have the right equipment to do the job properly. It also provides with lateral bracing. Uh, the columns will be poured concrete columns, and then the steel frame will take place on top of it. And Molly just want to walk around once and get everybody the feel of what this building might look like from this looking up at the structure, and then you get a sense of how this might work. So if we can just go back to the first Woodbridge slide. What we've tried to do for the town is we've tried to put together a project that has budgetary, tight budgetary constraints, a project that has long-term structural feasibility, low-cost maintenance. And I think that we have been able to accomplish that with the materials and the design that we have. Harrelton on a very important point, and that is that there are two kinds of heating and air conditioning going on in this building. The nine service bays are only going to be heated to 40 degrees, and they will have no air conditioning in them. They will only be heated with space heaters that will provide, and we're going to rely upon the fact that gas will be brought to this location. So it will be highly efficient gas space heaters. The service bay will be heated to 70 degrees, no air conditioning but it'll have a different air conditioning heating system. And the offices across the top will be heated and air conditioned as required. Well, Jerry, let's talk about those offices because what we've learned in this process is something that is beyond the scope of your charge to the committee. Is that we, in, in hiring the architect and having him come up with a mezzanine concept, we, we found something out that we'd like to bring to your attention. Uh, and that's that Presently, our public works facility has a the facility that we are the, is the object of our desires this evening down below. We we have a, uh, a a a management individual has an office in this building. We have the um, uh, office people who do critical work uh, for us in the center building, and they have uh, a storage facility in the center building in the lower level. So that's four locations uh, in three buildings. And what the, the, the um, opportunity quickly was realized here is that on this mezzanine level, which would be approached now from a, about where the handicapped parking spot is in the lower parking lot here, uh, you would, we have a place where we can right, put the we'll band see. back together. We have all the space that we're building anyway, we're building anyway to house our, our program. Uh, and, and for uh, a modest sum, we believe, that we can um, uh, uh, bring uh, into one place all of our public works functions. And um, uh, we're very excited at this prospect. It is outside of the scope of the charge to the committee. We just want you to be aware of that. And we don't have to do it if you don't want us to do it. But we think that it's a, it's a fantastic opportunity. It raises some interdepartmental efficiencies, I believe. 
but it also gives the town the opportunity of, of realigning its space needs in those three buildings. If it'll, it'll free up a large amount of space in the town hall, it frees up an even larger amount of space in the center building. So, uh, you know, I think that if you could show them that particular features of that. Why don't you show the walkway into it, you know, so it, it's accessed without getting into the, the working that, area of the public work? The way that would work is this, this parking lot right here would be at a grade elevation that is equal to the grade elevation of the mezzanine level. And you would walk directly from there across this bridge. You want to go to a little section, Molly, please? Yeah. That one right there. This is the parking lot. This is the town hall. This is the mezzanine level. And you'll notice they're fairly close. This ramp is designed to meet handicap requirements so that we can have handicapped access from both the lower level and the upper level. But most importantly, people who now want to come to public works will know exactly where to go. There'll be one place. There could be one office. As Terry said, this was not part of our charge. But what happened when we started to lay out this concept of putting the building into the hillside, we began to realize that by, by creating the mezzanine, we created a level that was very, very close to the parking lot. And even though we initially this was not our intent to have the, the mezzanine go all the way across the building, with Harold working it in such a way that we were able to make that happen, we were able to get this additional office space at virtually very little cost and within the budget to the town. I mean, not, not that the office space, but the mezzanine, the structure itself was within the budget. The office space is still, and the finishing of that office space is over and above what we had been charged to do. But we have the space to do it if you wish us to do it. One, one plus in moving the offices, the, the few departmental offices here, it vacates more space elsewhere here in the Civic Center, which uh, we don't put a, a figure on, but is obviously very valuable in terms of expanding needs in other departments. So effectively, uh, Terry, what I, do you want to talk a little bit about the budget? Part sure. The second question that everybody asks about this is very nice public works is how much does it cost? As part of <coughs> the architect we hire, uh, that you approve, we uh, hired a, a professional cost estimator. Uh, we have also worked with others. Um, sure. Um, the. Um, and we think that, that, that it's, it's a very... We're so happy back here, Jerry. Nice and back at the Sure. Nice mulch. Thank you. We have, we have on the front sheet a, 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 um, a conclusion, and it's backed up with several other sheets of detail. And understand that we are presently in the design development phase of this project. So um, we we believe that we um, know what the steel is going to cost. We believe that we know about the concrete. We've even gotten a lot of very good prices, I think, on on public works equipment, the lifts, the the the, uh, uh, the drums for the oil, the all the you know, the particulars that we have to do. We are still in design development, uh, but um, the uh, we've also, by the way, uh, feel that this project it would uh, be best done under a, a general contractor type uh, organizational process as opposed to a construction manager. If you recall, the construction manager form of delivery of construction services is that we pay them a fee to represent us and they let a bunch of contracts to subcontractors acting in the capacity of the town. Um, for that, there's a sizable fee. There's another contingency in there, and we think that this project is of a size that we would look for a good contractor uh, and make him uh, responsible for uh, the project. Uh, so uh, we've, 
uh, responsibly uh, added some general conditions as a percentage of the project. Um, I, I'm on the top page. We, we, we believe that the contractor will have to have, while well, this is negotiable, an overhead uh, 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 yeah, uh, that ends up to be a percentage of the building. We'll see as the project goes on. Uh, we have a design contingency because we're still in design development. There are, we are still getting prices on things. We we put budget as, uh, numbers as a as a uh, as a placeholder for them. We it's a good educated guess that this represents, uh, but we believe that at this point we need a con design contingency. We had we encourage us to ourselves to have a construction contingency for those things that happen in every construction project. Um, we have we've listed a uh, a what we believe is a smart number for garage equipment. Um, uh, not all of it is, is is known, but we think that we can do it for this number. We've we've uh, we've provided a escalation number, which is if we don't do this soon, things get more expensive. And I think that our current estimate is is that we if, if we don't. We would like to start construction, by the way, in our most optimistic of circumstances, in October 22nd of this coming year. And that's if we haven't heard from you, we haven't heard from the Town Planning and Zoning Commission. We, this is the first public presentation of this project. So, um, but we, we that's our, the, the project's discussion point right now is for a start of construction. And, and, and this estimate is premised on that. Um, we have some uh, some builders we've included in our budget some some soft costs that, that the town needs such as the builders risk insurance some town bonding costs that we believe that we the project has to accommodate we need additional professional services most of which have been approved by the um, uh, public works uh, building committee that's not yet in front of you uh, uh, I would anticipate it you know if if Depending on your reactions to these things, we might we might be asking for this, but we put the money in the budget to reflect what we anticipate asking. We have some very technical help um, along the way. We have some testing and inspections during it that's no normal as a part of a construction thing, and then we come up with a number um, of five million nine hundred ninety-two thousand six hundred eighty-nine dollars. It's a nice round number. Oh, <laughs> we subtract the, the state steep grant that we have on hand. Uh, <coughs> and we also subtract the remainder of the insurance proceeds that we have on hand. And, uh, and this budget would anticipate borrowing as, as, as you have presently contemplated in, our, in your present capital plan of Five million dollars. Mm -hmm. This is at four million nine forty-two six eighty-nine. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> Just made it. Yeah. So, so we'd just like to add also that not only do we go to a professional cost estimator, but I have two other prices that I obtained: one from a general contractor who was took took a look at the project, and one from a prefabricated contractor, guy that does prefabricated design work, and. All three numbers were within five percent of each other, so three different sources came up with the same cost. So this number is for the the bay, the nine bay, what you saw on on the screen here, and the uh, the shed and the truck wash. Yes, sir. And, yes. And so in the offices, right in the offices. Oh, in the offices. So mm -hmm. it, within the bay, now I guess that's different because this is a thirteen bay. That's right. Yeah. Yes. That was what was initially proposed, mm -hmm. and now it's down to nine bays. Yeah. No. 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 We have thirteen bays. Oh, it's thirteen. We have nine storage. Nine for for, for storing trucks and three for servicing the vehicle. Oh, so these over here, are the three servicing. Correct, sir. Okay, I got you. So, within the bay and in the floors, is it just a, a slab? Is there nothing in there to collect? No, there is uh, a trench there, So there is trench. So, you, so the vehicles could not actually be washed down inside the, the building. If water we had water holes for that, yes. Was were water collection? Is that was that part of this or yes? Yes. The trench drain is part of the contract. 
and <laughs> as is the storage for that water because you can't dump that right. water you have to store it in a separate location that's why we have the truck washing feature which it right, but yeah, in but if you one can wash the vehicles within within the building no. like i'm sorry when you come back in from salting the roads and you bring the vehicle in a we hose it down and just collect and it down we, we, we would plan to bring the, the the trucks through the wash bay and then into the garage where they would drive. But they could also in a separate. But they could also be washed. Just the problem with that. You, you don't no. want to start. Yeah. You can't do it. We could do that, but the problem is, is that um, we can't discharge water from that trench drain. The water right. has to be no collected. Collection. That's that was like that's what I asked. So there's no collection. It sure is. Uh, there's a trench drain, just like in the firehouse, by the way. Right. Uh, and we go through, just like in the firehouse, through a oil and water separator. Right. right. And then we go in, and then from there, what's left from that goes into a 2,000 gallon tank. Mm -hmm. It's a holding tank. Right. And that's held until it's filled, and then we yeah, pay somebody to move it out of there. Right. right. Now, mm -hmm. the reason why we want to wash in the right. wash bay is that it's a closed system. We, we the wash water gets into a, uh, a thing, it's repumped and washed for the next drop. We recycle the water. Excuse me? And the wash bay, the water is recycled, so you don't have to, so we get more for our buck. Like when so you go to a car wash, that's car what they wash do, yeah. exactly. recycle the so water. Not, yeah. It's not being taken away. Correct. 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 <laughs> and, the, and, and the fuel <laughs> station will continue to be where it is. Correct. Right. So we're not, and we're getting, we're looking at getting a new one anyway, right? Well, you just replaced the, um, just the head and the, the that part of it, yeah. Okay, so that's that's a mistake. <coughs> so I guess they'll still come in. That the vehicles will still come in the same way. They'll fill up and then circle back around. Well, one of the things right. too, what we looked at was we don't want to try to get like the policemen or firemen or anybody else who comes to the, as he, as Terry calls it, the public drinking fountain. Um, we're trying to keep people that side away from where everybody's doing the maintenance work. Right. Because that creates less of a hazard we have, for anybody. We have a lot of backing up of trucks, and, and it's just not a, it's a work area. Right, well, all the vehicles have to be backed in anyway, right? Because you can a drive through, you back, you right into the. Right. You're backing, if you're not hill. backing in, you're backing up. Mm -hmm. Right, that's right. It's one side. We, we also have designed this in such a way, sir, that there's adequate truck rating, turning radiuses coming through the truck wash and going around the truck wash, that no one to get to the gas bay has to go into the yard. And we have studies up, done by our engineer on those truck turning radii to make sure that it worked properly. Oh, so they can come out and just make a U turn and go right back. Make a U turn behind the wash bay? They go through the wash bay, take a left hand turn, and go to the gas bay. Mm -hmm. Or go around the wash bay. Go around right, they're not being washed if they're just refueling. Right. Just they just go around they can the refuel bay. and then do a U turn behind the wash bay? Not a U turn, just no, a regular just keep turn. Just go right around the whole thing. Right around the loop. wash bay now. Right. A loop. Mm -hmm. It's a loop. It's a loop. Everything's going to loop. And we right. and we have and, and we've laid out it for both fire trucks, school buses, uh, and what we consider is the worst case scenario. And um, uh, and after our engineers uh, mm -hmm. proved to us in a software program that worked, we took the trucks out and had a piece of can of white paint and we figured it out to make sure it would work and it does. So. I think the key ingredient here is that we have placed the most expensive building and the least expensive place to build it. And the lightweight steel building, which is just storage, can go anywhere because it doesn't require any pilings or footings or fancy stuff. And the truck bay is on the good soil. So we have virtually designed it in such a way that every piece of the puzzle works with the whole to make it the most efficient way it can be. We worked with the land. That's what made it efficient for us. So, any What's other the total square footage of that? Thirteen. Uh, what was it? Thirteen thousand. I think we're like thirteen thousand square feet or fourteen thousand square feet with all the buildings. With all the buildings? Yep. Yeah. It's smaller than any of the other pr proposals to date, and the key to making it work is the mezzanine. All the other proposals were all on grade. So they took all of that office space and all of that warehouse uh, storage space and put it all on one level. What we did was just overlap it, built one structure to put it into, and made it work as a unit. So we built a smaller building 
and got everything to work inside of it. it. There are a couple of very key elements that you need to be sensitive to, and that is that right now there are no overhead cranes for loading and unloading, no overhead uh, jacks for loading and unloading the, the, um, the uh, uh, plows. There's, when they have to change a plow blade, it's got to be done manually. We cannot do that in a very safe manner with the, with the jack that will hold it up. And, and most importantly, the way in which vehicles get serviced now will have the lift and the, and the, the pit in order to service the vehicles in the most effective way so that people don't have to get on a thick dolly and roll around and crawl underneath the car. And then one, one more question. What's the, the cost for the office space? That hasn't been isolated at all. It, it really amounts to uh, uh, steel studs and sheetrock. So, so you but, but it's, it's, all folded it's, it's in. included it's still, in this price. It's yes. still with it. It's still under the budget. Yes, yes. Right. That's So you're saying what well, we said wasn't part of the charge, but it wasn't part of the charge. But it's not part of the charge, but it's still under the, the total. We put budget. it in the, these mm -hmm. numbers that you have. Okay, I, I thought it was a separate number. There. No, we put it all. We'd together. love to ask you for more, but we think that. We're kind of, we'd like to be attentive yeah. and, and, and well I just know I appreciate the that. question I want to be able to say <laughs> yeah, right. there's no, there's no right. equipment in that number there's just the structure right just the office just, <laughs> and, and and right. just so that you're also aware is the offices are sprinkled with a wet system the garages are sprinkled with a dry system there's a full compressor system in the building so that all the tires that, are, that it runs through the whole structure can be blown up, filled, done whatever has to be done at the particular truck bay. You don't have to come around to one spot to get it done. There are five different fluid systems built into this price <coughs> from police oil, regular oil, um, automatic, transmission, automatic fluid. transmission fluid and the windshield wiper fluid. fluid. All of that is being handled at a, at a <coughs> secured location now with a appropriate drainage so that they don't go into the soil and with overhead racks that can now be pulled down to actually do the work where it's needed. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of things that were built into this particular first go around of the budget that always could come out if we needed to. Right. And just as an aside, do you know Chris, do they plug in the vehicles for the winter? Here they do, yes. They will be in here. Uh, we, if you need to, there'll be a plug there, yes, and we can plug them in if we need to, yes. Okay. But they don't do that now? They do that. Oh, well, they, they, they do it with an extension cord. It's not right. a big, long extension cord. Mm -hmm. But if we need to, and they drive in, there will be outlets there where they can plug them in. But it's going to be about 40, 45, 50 degrees. So I really don't think we're going to have an issue there. Right. Um, Frankly, our desire is to avoid that. And one of the we other things we were looking at, too, and we didn't bring this up, was when you look at public works, that's a 24-7 type situation here. We had hurricanes hit this year. We've had major snowstorms hit. And they're the guys who have to get out there first and get things done. And nobody else has power. So one of the things was there's a generator over at the firehouse, which we're looking at, and the possible, old, the old firehouse, excuse me. And we want to bring that over just in case. So if we do have emergency outages or something, they always have power to, to fix the vehicles, you know, to run welders, run the air compressors, whatever we need to do, and change tires, things that have to do. So these guys can get out there and service the uh, people in Woodbridge. So, we're trying to be really efficient, use the stuff that we have, and I, I think we've um, I, I think we've done everything we've been asked to do, and, and I think uh, hopefully uh, you agree with us. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Can I some timetable, Terry? I just had a quick question yeah, about the uh, <coughs> storage space you envision for the mezzanine level, and and it's right it, as I look at it, it, it's right in the middle of this. Long building, so it doesn't seem accessible, and I'm not sure what's stored there. Is it stuff on pallets that has to be run down? I'll, the hall? I'll, give, you, I'll give you an example. You can see in one of the plans. Uh, there's a there's a uh, the first uh, area uh, for that storage that's next to the mechanics um, uh, the three bay uh, or that the fourth bay. That there's a staircase that goes up. There's uh, we're planning on putting our street sign inventory. We we maintain a inventory of all of our street signs. Uh, apparently the one that gets stolen the most, by the way, um, <laughs> is Penny Lane. 
Um, <laughs> we, we, will, we, we, we Imagine we're, we're sterling lane. <laughs> way, you, you'll, you'll see that we now have it on a very, very high, only high post to try to discourage um, the pilfering of such a sign. But, uh, but we actually, you know, over, over time things happen and we have to replace the sign. And so we have an inventory of these sorts of things. Uh, presently, and we've accommodated that for in that first area. We, we in that storage area that you're looking at, we envision as just being a, a cage, a wire cage. So that we think that the police, for example, have a lot of storage stuff. Apparently, the police store uh, a rear seat for their cars. From time to time, they need to replace the rear seat. Uh, for whatever adventures uh, befall them. So we it's all kinds of stories that we anticipate that storage space to be. It's, it's deeper storage to uh, Absolutely. If I could share a little in insight. When we originally designed that mezzanine, that w we were going to have a crane system that took, took stuff from the lower level and brought it up there to be stored. But we ended up that when we actually went through the inventory of every piece of equipment that the town of Woodbridge owns and needs, we had more than enough storage space on the ground floor. And, and this storage space, by the way, is, is from that 35-foot column point forward. So we think that we have a, uh, the trucks will fit in that 35-foot deep bay. Uh, and then that storage space that we've already assigned, by the way, for a tire machine that we do presently do not have, neither the police department or public works, <coughs> puts, a, uh, puts a tire on a rim. They both go to different facilities at, at, at a remote locations, uh, and and this project, in this budget, funds them a a, a, a machine to put a tire on a rim. We never, we presently can't do that. Um, the um, uh, we have apparently as as part of snow plowing, there's a replacing blade that we have to replace in a bad snowstorm frequently. Uh, we have hoisting equipment in this budget. To, to allow them to do that in a safe and efficient way. We have a waste oil handling system to remove, we generate about uh, 500 gallons of waste oil a year. It's not enough to use it in a waste oil furnace because we've, we've looked into that. Uh, but we batch it uh, we, uh, so we can control that waste stream and so we're all um, in a containment area on the other end, the new oil is in a is brought in, pumped into the where we need it. Uh, it's 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 stored in a 55 gallon barrel. Is how we receive it in an area that is a contained area, and so we're we've, we're handling these fluids in a way that we should be doing now and not. And nobody has to lift up a barrel. Yes, sir. Uh, Oh, go ahead. I just had a question. Do we need an elevator in this building for any reason? We do not, and that's okay. the key. That's why we have two levels, and each right. level is handicapped accessible. Okay. And there's a handicapped bathroom on both levels. So that if, if we should hire, if the town should hire a handicapped truck driver, mm -hmm. they don't have to go upstairs to go okay. to the bathroom. The bathrooms are handicapped on the first floor. If they should hand, hire someone who needs a handicapped a facility on the second floor, they come right in from the parking lot, it's all right there. Okay. And we avoid the cost of an elevator. Uh, okay, thank you. Um, I can appreciate from uh, 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 from a driving on uh, center road point of view that this is going to have a fairly low profile because I'm going to be driving by either way it, because yeah, it's right. going to, you're not going to see a massive building which no, I think is really a, 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 a very good thing. Um, but I want my permit for the transfer station. Am I coming to this campus mm -hmm. or am I still coming here? You're coming to this parking lot. But I'm going over here. Yeah. And, and, you, and, you, and you'll have a, a nice light and walk uh, through the woods, <coughs> short path, uh, 30 feet or so, and, and, and you're coming right into that same building. And, uh, and if you wanted to get a permit now, you have to go to the same right. building. Right, right. Right. Oh, the, oh, it's not here. No, no. it's over there. It's been right. here no. for several years. Well, the department's been balkanized. We have three or four right. different locations. Well, now yeah. this is going to consolidate yeah. everything it's in one. Place. That was the other yeah. thing I was going to say. Is the campus approach is a lovely approach yep. as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, okay, so all that administrative side is over there, and is that the use of these offices? That is correct. Right. 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 
And what's the proportion of men to women employed by the Department zero, of Health? Zero, zero women and no, well, no, hope springs eternal. For the, for the well, department. you you, you got a no, rip off bathroom situation. But the, <laughs> the, the office, <laughs> the office people. Are well, but two. I'm saying I'm yeah. just. We, 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 we provided an office, uh, a bathroom for the office employees, <coughs> which are right. presently uh, uh, two women and one man. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, for our our truck driving uh, right. fleet, uh, we provide both facilities. We feel obligated to do that, uh, but the, uh, but we have no employees at, uh, at, 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 at this present. point in time. Okay. Uh, but we've provided in the chance that we do. Yeah. We've right. she'll have a very nice clearly really lockers and showers. <laughs> right. Well, that's what I'm trying to go. There yeah. seems to be, a but it, it's going to be a lot smaller. You know, it's just a very basic uh, few couple yeah. of lockers. One one minutes. fixture yeah. of yeah. each kind that right. anybody else gets. Yeah. So it's a uh, we believe that it's a. Uh, for our, our present proportion uh, of employees and adequate number. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Um, any, any other questions? I'm sorry, I just wanted to ask yes, one more ahead. thing. What are the kitchen facilities at present, or just in terms of the break room? We have a, we have a uh, plan, uh, and this is a, uh, a direct request by, uh, we've been listening a lot to our mm -hmm. employees. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they eat together as a family their lunch uh, and under break uh, and um, the uh, there are two refrigerators we think of them as residential uh, refrigerators uh, there's two microwaves mm -hmm. uh, and so we've tried to provide for that that lunch rush uh, okay. and we think that the that the adequate break area that we've given them and it's been expanded by the way at their request to uh, gives the, us the possibility, uh, we have some union work rules to, to and some safety rules, that just practical, so that we can allow them a space to rest um, mm -hmm. comfortably uh, while continuing with their duties and mm -hmm. being available to us. Thank you. That really comes into play uh, uh, during winter right. storm weather. Right. Mm -hmm. Sure. Where they're, they're going 24 right. hours. Sure. Yeah. Right. Sure. Okay. In some summer storms as well, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. So we've learned. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. Any other questions or comments? Uh, so, so our, our we're on the agenda for you for two items. One, we have a request to you. We we wanted you to see this first, publicly first, and we we our our, our erasers are still on our pencils. We are in design development. If you have any comments and concerns or questions, or if you have to know anybody that does, we would like to hear about it. Uh, because we we are this is still uh, in in a in a fluid motion. Uh, we if there's things that we haven't thought of, uh, we'd be happy, happy to hear it, address it. Uh, we would like to have we would ask that you refer this to your town planning and zoning commission for what's called an 824 mm -hmm. referral. This is a statutory obligation, uh, and that we'd like to explain all this to them, and and they will I'm sure. Uh, forward their comments to you. And also uh, to the Inland Wetlands we'd also. also We'd also like to start uh, an Inland Wetlands application. We are, <coughs> by the way, away from wetlands. We don't think it's much of an application. However, uh, <coughs> we uh, have our, our, we want to be respectful to our neighbors. Um, uh, the Park Association, uh, uh, they will get notice of this mm -hmm. wetlands application. Uh, I've to already told them that I'd like to show them the project because we think that this is a this is a project that's that is ever shrinking you know if, if when you see those three plans of the first 12 million dollar plan the next plan and you know if this building looks like it's getting smaller it did uh and i think that that your point about bringing it back you know tucks it away from both mm -hmm. center road and i believe uh, Newton Park, by the mm -hmm. way, mm -hmm. um, a lower profile. I think it's a. It's, it's it. It also gives us this this advantage, uh, thermal advantage, by the way, of tucking mm -hmm. it in. Mm -hmm. So uh, we hope to have this to, to address the long term operation costs of having a, an efficient thermal envelope. I think it's a very sustainable design and very cost conscious in every way that we could think of. Okay. Good. So, uh, if there's no further comments or questions, then I would entertain a motion to refer this uh, proposal to the uh, 
Town Plan and Zoning Commission for an 824 review as well as to the Inland Wetlands Commission. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. I understand you're going to be making a similar presentation to the Board of Finance a week from yep. tomorrow night. We are. Yep. And, and, so. and we'd like to come to the budget proposal, uh, the budget workshop, um, uh, uh, later on this month. On the 23rd? Uh, to uh, uh, provide uh, the same sort of information to any townspeople who might want to see it at that time. Okay. So, if, with your permission, we'd like to, you know, you put us on the right place in that thing, and, and, and the more we'll have done this presentation a few times more by then, we'll probably be more efficient at it. There you go. Okay. Well, I want to thank Chris for all the effort he's put into the Chris Sorensen, and for Terry for doing the job here that's beyond his job description, so to speak, mm -hmm. and for hiring these two excellent architects who. Uh, Thank you. have done a very good job on this. Thank you. So thank, you. Okay. thank you all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do you want to save money? Yeah. And, and, and so, 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 so